Hey, everybody. Welcome to MedKit's Provider Spotlight, where we interview all kinds of private practices providers who are making a huge impact in our little special corner of the world, healthcare. Um, so today we have the distinct pleasure of hosting Dr. Philip Obedia, a very accomplished cardiothoracic surgeon who has gone to some of the very best schools in our country performing over 3,000 surgeries a ton. Uh, Dr. Ovedia has a thriving telehealth practice, Ovedia Heart Health, and focused on the prevention of heart disease and the treatment of metabolic health, utilizing lifestyle and dietary modification. He also started Ovedia Cardiothoracic Surgery and works as an independent contractor um, throughout the United States. Um, so it's really amazing work that he's doing. But last but not least, there is more. Dr. Ovedia is a fabulous leader of iFix Hearts, where you can get some really great elite health coaching, take courses, and get a little bit of a sneak peek of his book and podcast, Stay Off My Operating Table. Welcome, Dr. Ovedia. Thank you for being here. Yeah, it's great to be here with you, Rachel. Uh, really excited to uh, have this conversation, talk to you know both the practitioners that are out there as well as the non-practitioners in your audience and uh, give my perspective as a heart surgeon who is really trying to keep people off the operating table ultimately. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I love that. Very, uh, very bold. And so I think that also comes from a bold and very interesting background that you have. And if you if you don't mind, can you tell us a little bit your story and what kind of prompted you to open up your own practice? Yeah, sure thing. Um, you know, I, from a very young age, always knew I wanted to uh, go into healthcare, be a doctor, and specifically wanted to be a surgeon. Uh, and and the honest truth is, I don't know why that was, but it it, it was. Uh, and my parents will tell you from, you know, very young when people would ask me what I wanted to do, I would say I wanted to be a surgeon, not I wanted to be a doctor. So um, I went through all the training and, you know, went through uh, medical school and, uh, you know, that surgery calling remained strong and uh, first uh, did a general surgery residency and then ultimately uh uh, decided to go into cardiac surgery because I found it to be such a fascinating field. Uh, you know, the physiology, the anatomy, the technical details of doing heart surgery all uh, called to me. And so, you know, I had a what I would say was a very standard career as a heart surgeon, was a very busy heart surgeon uh, at uh, community hospitals. And um, Behind the scenes, I would say, I guess, or really not behind the scenes, obvious to anyone that knew me, um, I was a very unhealthy heart surgeon. Uh, I had reached a point that I was morbidly obese. I was pre-diabetic. And I kind of recognized that I was going to end up on my own operating table. And I struggled with this because, you know, I was following the advice that I had been educated to give my patients eat less, move more, count your calories, eat a low fat diet, um, all of the stuff. And it wasn't working for me. It wasn't working for my patients. And I really, you know, started to ask some different questions. I got exposed to some different information. Uh, and ultimately, I was able to first overcome my health challenges. I lost 100 pounds, uh, reversed my prediabetes, have now maintained that weight loss for we're going on eight years. And along the way, I came to recognize that uh, maybe some of the, what I was told were fundamental truths around heart disease and around, you know, chronic disease in general weren't exactly the whole story. And so I really became passionate on keeping people off the operating table because I recognized that the vast majority of what I do as a surgeon shouldn't need to be done. Uh, we, the healthcare system, the healthcare practitioners are failing the patients. Uh, by letting it get to the point where they end up on my operating table, we have failed as a healthcare system. And so um, that really led me to, uh, you know, start this practice to work with people who wanted to try and avoid heart surgery, who wanted to try and avoid heart disease in general. 
And then uh, I wrote the book uh, coming up on three years ago now, uh, Stay Off My Operating Table. And uh, it's really been a unplanned but amazing uh, journey from there, I would say. <laughs> Yeah, no, I love that. I love that you're like, I, I don't want to see you here. You know, I do not come to my table. We can figure out another way. And I I think it's really incredible. And I see the passion and all the other folks that have taken their direct experience, something that has happened to them, and now helping others replicate that process, do the same, and frankly, stay off your operating table. So I love that you've taken something that you know, just like everyone else, you got fed certain information and then you started exploring also when you're like, this isn't working. This is not good. <laughs> I'm, I'm headed in the path of, um, not a great place. So in, in the interest of that, you're, you mentioned that your practice is telemedicine based. And I think that's pretty nifty and different. So how does that work? And, and what are the benefits of doing that? Yeah, the, you know, benefits of doing it is really, you know, convenience uh, for both myself and the patient. Um, and it's also the ability to reach patients wherever they might be, uh, you know, and so um, this, uh, this gets me out of the limitation of, um, oh, I'm nowhere near you, you know, the patient saying I'm nowhere near you, how can I work with you? Uh, and, you know, this was kind of a fortuitous uh, timing, I guess, as we all know, during the whole COVID pandemic, telemedicine really uh, came to the forefront as we were trying to figure out how to better serve patients, um, you know, without the physical uh, contact at that point. Uh, but the reality is, is that you know, this is a better way to deliver healthcare uh, in most scenarios. Now, there are the obvious limitations. I mean, I can't at least yet do heart surgery via telemedicine. Uh, but, you know, when we're talking about preventative uh, care, when we're talking about, you know, diet, lifestyle advice, all of that thing, all of that, um, it really can be done very well, you know, very well uh, without being in person. And um, it's allowed me to expand my reach. It's it certainly has some unique challenges. Um, yeah. I, I think I'm you know still at the forefront being a telemedicine only practice. Yeah. Many practices have added telemedicine as a component, uh, but telemedicine only. Uh, um, you know I'm licensed in over forty states and and uh, working towards uh, getting all fifty. Uh, which has its own unique uh, kind of challenges to it. And uh, quite frankly, it's been working very, very well. It has allowed me to, you know, serve patients who are looking for this uh, nationwide. And it's uh, convenient for them, works, you know, on my end as well, and uh, has a lot of, uh, I think this is a way that this is a direction that medicine is going to continue to gravitate towards. A hundred percent. And I love that anyone, anyone who's listening, you're an option. You can do this anytime, yep. any place. And so um, I love the benefits of being telemedicine based. And in terms of the people that you serve, you know, what, where are they? How do, how do they come to you? You know, what kind of state are they in? What kind of, issues are they dealing with that you're helping them with? Yeah, so it's really anyone who has heart disease or has reason to be concerned about heart disease. And and we do end up seeing patients across that continuum. Uh, um, you know, one of the, I would say, foundational parts of my messaging is that heart disease is metabolic disease. And if we're going to um, successfully intervene, we have to address the metabolic disease that I think gets ignored largely uh, by the mainstream medical system. So I have people who have already had heart surgery, already had stents, already had a heart attack that come to me to get a better approach to uh, not having this worsen over time. And I have people who, you know, are just being very proactive and want to make sure they're doing uh, everything they can be doing uh, to optimize their heart health as as 
a part of their overall health. Um, and uh, so, you know, we serve lots of different kind of points along that journey, ultimately. Yeah, no, 100%. And, you know, we, you mentioned this a couple of times, but there's clearly some things that we have been told about our health, about losing weight, about our heart health, that are just simply not true, or that are not effective. And yep. we're being fed this information. And I, when I read your bio online, I was glued. I was like this. I was like, yes, this is so relatable. Like, I feel like everyone has been trying different fad diets, the, this thing, that thing, the other thing. And it's just all, it's all junk. So can you dive in a little bit about your book and some of those, you know, false narratives that we're getting from, you know, health, other healthcare providers, health, you know, what's happening in this, in this world where we're just getting fed complete junk. Yeah. So, you know, the, pro, the uh, prevailing narrative around heart disease for the past uh, 50 years, even longer, honestly, 70 years in, in the, in the United States here has been around the, uh, what we can call the diet heart hypothesis, the, the cholesterol centric view of heart disease and that, you know, the prevention of heart disease is all about managing our cholesterol levels. And the sad reality is uh, this approach has failed miserably. Uh, we've been giving this message for 70 years. It has been translated into uh, food guidelines, recommendations around what we eat. Uh, it has been, you know, uh, uh, operationalized by the pharmaceutical industry uh, to a, you know, uh, very successfully from their standpoint. Uh, and yet heart disease is still the number one killer in the United States, uh, far and away. And not only is it not going away, it is getting worse. Uh, over the past decade, there has been a clear uptick in the incidence of heart disease, the number of deaths related to heart disease uh, year after year after year. And so we're losing the battle. Yeah. This strategy isn't working. And yet it is the only thing that medicine, mainstream medicine, the healthcare system can talk about. Uh, when most people go to their primary care doctor and they have that 15 minute visit, 14 minutes of that, it seems, is spent on what is your LDL cholesterol and what medications can we give you to lower your LDL cholesterol? And maybe there'll be a little mention of, and you should also be on a low-fat diet. And again, these things aren't working, and yet that's our whole approach to heart disease. So it, you know, again, I had to have my eyes open to this, but there's an obvious reason why, and it's because heart disease is a metabolic disease. Uh, most of the chronic diseases that we face in society are metabolic diseases. And if we're going to successfully prevent and, you know, uh, reverse these diseases, we need to focus on those metabolic aspects. Uh, and so that's what the book talks about. That's what we do uh, in the practice. Uh, and uh, that is really our path forward. Uh, but again, the mainstream medical system uh, is is not focusing on this. They don't talk about this. Uh, and that's why I believe that there, the efforts have been unsuccessful. Yeah, no, I mean, we were saying it's completely, you've been, we've been educated and been told this for 70 years. And then we see the little graph going like this. It's not working. And I'm a data gal. So, you know, it, the, the truth is in the charts and the numbers and it's not working. So why are we still promoting this and why are we still talking about it as if it does? So I appreciate you bringing that to light. And before we close out today, um, and you can tell us, you know, of course there's people who are gonna wanna reach out. This is really compelling and good information. Um, if you could take one single thing away from this interview, if someone could say, oh my gosh, this is the one thing to remember, what would that be? And then if you could tell us how we can find you um, and ask any other questions, make an appointment, discovery call, that would be amazing. Yeah. So the what, the big takeaway uh, that I would have for people is for them to take charge of their health, uh, for them to recognize that they are in charge of their health. It's not up to your doctor to make you healthy. It's not up to the government. It's not up to the pharmaceutical or the food industry. 
Um, it is up to you to take charge of your health. And if you're not getting the results that you want uh, when it comes to your health, uh, it's incumbent on you to find other resources, find other options. Um, you know, if you're going to your primary care doctor year after year, and all they can do is basically rewrite those prescriptions, uh, but you're not really getting healthier, um, it's time for a change. And, uh, uh, you know, and when people get to that point and when they recognize that, uh, my team and I are at the ready uh, to help you implement those changes. And uh, to do so, you know, you can basically just start at iFix Hearts everywhere. Uh, the website is iFixHearts.com. On all social media, we're at iFix Hearts. Uh, the book we mentioned, it's called Stay Off My Operating Table, and it is uh, widely available uh, as well. And uh, we're here uh, to help serve the people that want to take this different approach. I love it. You are the captain of your own ship, so steer it. <laughs> so I think that is sage advice that everyone should take. Um, Dr. Ovidia, this has been incredible great wealth of knowledge. We hope to have you again, but thank you for everything that you provided us today. Thank you, Rachel, and happy to uh, come back any any time to, to dive deeper on this. Oh, definitely. There are a lot of misconceptions out there, and we could talk for hours about <laughs> the decline of maybe our healthcare system. <laughs> Thanks so much again.